you have been blatantly lied to all your life. Yes, that's how I felt when I discovered that much of what we were taught at school about the Earth was wrong. The Earth not only rotates, it also shakes and wobbles. The planet responds to other forces and movements on its surface and in its interior. Most of the time, the Earth seems solid and unchanging beneath our feet, but this is just an illusion created by our limited perspective. You are in EdDevelop. Here you will find the best curiosities and scientific facts on YouTube. I invite you to subscribe and activate the notification bell to make your day much better every time we upload a new video. So that you don't get hit by earthquakes and can live a calmer and less shaky life, I invite you to join and subscribe to the Patreon channel. It's cheaper than a cup of coffee. It will help us continue to grow and bring you all the greatest content we have for you. So yeah, let's shake! What do Chile, Colombia, Spain, and Italy have in common? I'll give you a few seconds to think. Quite right. All of these countries are located on major geographical faults, so seismic activity is recurrent. Nowhere in the world we can avoid or hide from an earthquake. In reality, the Earth is far from stable. Beneath us, huge chunks are constantly moving to form valleys, pushing to form mountains, or shifting to form rivers and oceans. The ground is always shifting, stretching, wobbling, and our growing understanding of these phenomena is leading to a better understanding of how our planet works. What makes the Earth tremble? Number 1. Pressure Before we get to the point, let me give you a little comparison. The Earth is like that strange friend who can never be stable. Its mass is unevenly distributed, and everything is moving all over the place. And when the Earth rotates, it wobbles as if it had too much to drink. But don't worry. Scientists like Isaac Newton predicted this many years ago. In fact, the Earth has a number of oscillations, the most important of which is known as the Chandler Wobble, discovered by astronomer Seth Chandler in 1891. It turns out that this crazy movement of the Earth causes the poles to shift by about 9 meters. Imagine that! Throughout the 20th century, scientists had a lot of crazy theories to explain this wobble, from changes in water storage to atmospheric pressure to earthquakes and even interactions between the Earth's core and mantle. But it was a geophysicist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Richard Gross, who solved the mystery in 2000 using meteorological and ocean models. He observed the wobble between 1985 and 1995 and was able to understand a little better the madness happening on our planet. He calculated that two-thirds of the wobble was caused by changes in seafloor pressure and one-third by changes in atmospheric pressure. Number 2. Water Does water move the Earth? Well, the short answer is yes, but you won't believe the long answer. Did you know that the seasons also affect how the Earth shapes? This is because the amount of rain, snow, and humidity varies in different parts of the world. Scientists have been using the position of the stars to find the North and South Poles for over 100 years, and since the 1970s they have also been using satellites. However, the North and South Poles continue to move relative to the Earth's surface, even when the effects of the Chandler Wobble and seasonal variations are removed. Number 3. The Artificial Meanders It's no secret that humans are wreaking havoc on the planet, and that's affecting the Earth's oscillations. In a 2009 study, Felix Landerer calculated that if CO2 levels doubled between 2000 and 2100, the heat from the oceans would cause them to expand and shift the North Pole by about 1.5 centimeters per year towards Alaska and Hawaii. Crazy! And in another study in 2007, the same Landerer looked at how warming oceans would affect the pressure and circulation of the ocean floor and found that these changes would also shorten days by just over 0.1 milliseconds. It's as if the weather had agreed to play a cosmic joke on the oceans. Where do most earthquakes happen? Remember when I mentioned some countries in Latin America? Well, it turns out that almost 80% of the world's earthquakes occur on the coast of the Pacific Ocean, which includes countries like Russia, Japan, Taiwan, and many others that are part of that ocean. Yes, the same area is known as the Ring of Fire because of its many active volcanoes. Most of these telluric movements occur when tectonic plates, the huge pieces of rock that make up the top layer of the Earth, collide or scrape against each other along geological faults or seismic zones. It's like a wrestling ring, but made by nature. 
The funny thing is that these effects are not immediately noticeable. Normally, they are gradual and go unnoticed on the surface. But, you guessed it, enormous pressure builds up between the plates, like a game of Jenga. When this pressure is suddenly released, it creates seismic waves that shake everything in their path. These waves are so strong that they travel hundreds of miles through the rocks before reaching the surface. But there are other tremors that can occur in places far from seismic zones when plates are stretched or compressed. Want to know what kinds of faults there are? Types of Geological Faults Faulting is not unique, i.e. there are different types of faulting, which in principle have different functions. These include subsidence faults, reverse faults, and rift faults. Why not take a closer look at them? Displacement Fault When two parts of the Earth's crust move sideways, we're talking about a potential earthquake. This is what happens when there is a rifting fault, which literally causes the Earth to open and close from one side to the other. The most famous example of this natural phenomenon is the infamous San Andreas Fault in California. Yes, the one from the movies. This fault stretches over 1,000 kilometers from Southern California to the city of San Francisco and is caused by the Pacific Plate moving northwest under the North American Continental Plates. That's a lot of movement. But it is not only in North America that we find these geological wonders. The Anatolian Fault, responsible for the earthquake that shook Turkey and Syria a few days ago, is another displacement or transformation fault. The Earth never ceases to amaze us with its power and capacity for transformation. Subsidence Faults Did you know that not all earthquakes are lateral? That's right. Up and down movements can also be responsible for shaking the ground beneath our feet thanks to what are known as subsidence faults. On these faults, the ground above the fault zone can either sink, a normal fault, or be pushed up, a reverse fault. It's like a game of now you see it, now you don't. A normal fault occurs when the deeper part of the crust moves away from the upper layer, while in a reverse fault the opposite happens. An example of a normal fault is the impressive Wasatch Fault, which runs for 150 kilometers in the Midwest of the United States. This fault is also caused by the movement of the Pacific Plate beneath the west coast of the United States. About 550 years ago, an earthquake of about 7 degrees on this fault caused the ground to sink almost a meter on one side. That's more than enough to make us wobble. Oblique Failure this is the simplest. It combines the two movements just mentioned. Did you know about these types of faults? Let me know in the comments. The topic is really getting more interesting. Currently active seismic zones. Earthquakes and seismic activity are still a concern today, and rightly so. They are, after all, natural phenomena beyond our control, although we are learning to protect ourselves and predict them better and better but we cannot always anticipate them with today's technology. Knowing which countries are most at risk from earthquakes can help us make important decisions, such as where to go on vacation or even where to live. If we want to avoid these dangerous places, it is better to have this information at hand, but if we are scientists or scholars of these phenomena, this information can be invaluable in planning our research and studies in the places most likely to experience seismic activity. If you've ever wondered which countries are most at risk from earthquakes, then pay close attention. Number 1. United States of America Number 2. Mexico Number 3. Guatemala Number 4. Costa Rica Number 5. Peru Number 6. Ecuador Number 7. Chile Number 8. Vanuatu Number 9. Tonga Number 10. Tuvalu Number 11. Papua New Guinea Number 12, Indonesia. Number 13, Taiwan. Number 14, India. Number 15, Japan. Number 16, China. Number 17, Russia. Number 18, Islandia. Number 19, New Zealand. Number 20, Italy. Earthquakes in themselves are not much of a threat to humans, unless you are right on a fault line and fall into it. If you live in one of these most seismically active countries, I recommend you take all possible safety measures, and you'll be absolutely fine. That's it for today, folks. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's free. And turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. See you soon.